Hey there, chart friends. Lamar here from Chart Guys, checking in on the electric vehicle sector and plug a battery name. Okay, so let's check our macro charts. Monthly chart still looks just fine. I'm gonna just save that. Okay, so monthly chart still looks just fine. Really no monthly consolidation from this last low at 70.10. Bulls just ripping it on a tear. Weekly time frame, very similar. We've not had a weekly higher low since 379.11. Quite a ways away. And then on the daily time frame, of course, we know we just bounced. And this is exactly why I love drawing out the zones of interest first. And of course, on the daily time frame, this doesn't look like much. But if you've been watching the videos, they are marked off by hourly pivots. We'll get to that in a second. So this daily higher low, obviously very confidently set here at 566.34. And now we're testing the resistance zone. Would not be surprised if we tightened up a bit. But both close really strong today, particularly compared to the rest of the market. Right, Overall market was a very weak close. Uh, QQQ was a little bit stronger. But you know Tesla closing near the high of the day is impressive so relative strength in our big dog tesla we are looking for the potential of this lower high to be set here under 654.32 but you know out of all the names to short i don't, I don't know if i would be looking to short tesla <laughs> but so the trade is there but um you know there there are likely easier names to sh short like i think nkla had a bear break today which i don't, I don't think i'm going to cover oh look at that I don't think I'm going to cover NKLA, and I had to give one of these names a boot so that I could start covering... Well, I'll get there. <clears throat> All right, so what are we looking at here? No hourly consolidation today. Just a straight shot up. Straight shot up. So whenever we pull back, we'll be looking for a healthy hourly higher low. Anything over 604.66 will be one. But for me personally, I care more about this higher low, 596.80. But that being said, as long as we're range bound, I care the most about the range. Uh, I care much more about the range than I care about, you know, price action right now. Uh, price action trend changes, this is it, I should say. Okay, so I would not be surprised if we were to come down and test the lower end of this range again, right? We have to, we're probably, we're likely to chop about, tighten up a bit and contract. And then, you know, given enough time, we'll start to expand again. I think. <laughs> I think that's the most likely situation. Because, you know, don't forget, we just came from a period of expansion, right? This was a, quite a bit of, it's like a 50% gain, you know? So I would not be surprised with a little bit of contraction. Go sideways a bit, just like over here. Maybe even back test that previous high before looking for markup. Mark off this potential daily higher low there, okay. All right, so hourly trend still bullish. Tomorrow we'll be looking out for the potential of the bears to step in, right? If if this resistance is going to hold up, then ideally what the bears will do is show up, defend this uh, high of 64275, and then break to lower lows. But the first trade on deck is obviously that hourly higher low. All right, so let's see here. If we were looking for that hourly higher low, we could, let's mark that off maybe. We'll check out this guy. And then let's see where the five minute would get extended and it would be right there. So I don't hate it. I feel like a 12 EMA fish would be a bit aggressive knowing that we're in this, you know, potential EQ shaping up just because this was so much range. So I would prefer to play closer to this support level over here and play within this chop zone. Essentially, if you're looking for a higher low here, you're anticipating that the bears will not be able to put together enough volume to punch through this congestion zone. I think that's a reasonable assessment. Or rather, it's a reasonable expectation. My only concerns are that there's not a lot of range for a profit target. So I feel like there is an aggressive trade tomorrow for like a quick day trade looking for a potential hourly higher low. Well, like I said, I, I care more about bottom fishing these levels down here. So with this hourly RSI were to come up down here, I'd probably look for some price action supports to the left to look for maybe another hourly oversold play. Okay, but this is all, this is, this is there. And then of course you can be top fishing as well, but I, 
I just don't love it. The RR is clear, but I don't know. I would rather not short test that. Yeah, it would be one thing if we were doing this. You know, if the RSI was like constantly, constantly oversold, and then we were potentially maybe going to print some bearish divergence, like, right? Like here, hold on. Yeah, right. You see this peak and then this lower high, whereas in price action, we made a higher high. You know, we see something like that up against maybe a trend line resistance or up against price action resistance, and then okay, let's, let's, let's mess around with the short. But for now, I don't love it. Okay, Neo also bouncing from our shelf. This shelf was also marked. I have not touched this shelf in weeks. So same idea, marked off. Oh, I forgot to touch upon the hourly levels for the Tesla shelf. Okay, so this shelf is really just marked off by this, the low here. I think I had extended hours on. Yeah. So just marked off by these lows that got put in here. And I believe I may have moved it actually, now that I think about it. No, it didn't. Yeah, just marked off by this lows close and these previous highs. So you see, you can see a bunch of highs and lows were pr printed here, right? Here's one, here's two, here's another one, here's another one. Uh, I tried to break through, could not make it. There's another one, a test, a test. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and that was the, the, the last test, right? So just mark off these major pivots first and then look to play uh, bounce plays off of them in conjunction with extension, right? So RSI extension. You also had some RSI divergence where price made a lower low. And made RSI made a higher higher low. Right? Okay. Alright, so Neo bouncing from that shelf of support. Are we looking for we are not looking at, yeah, we are not looking for a daily higher low. The the daily downtrend is bearish. Man, sure wish I held on to that one. Anyway, the daily trend is bearish right now. It's got a bit of a head and shoulders look to it, but they both did show up and defend today. So no confirmation of that just yet. On the hourly time frame, the hourly trend, I would not consider this an, a, 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 an hourly trend change yet. I mean, I know that with extended hours on, technically it made a little higher low here, but I don't know, it made that higher low in extended hours. I just, there's no volume on it. No. For me, that's not enough. I don't, I'm not confident in that daily pivot being set yet. I would like to see the bulls break over this high here of 4148. So if the bulls can hold this level of 4013, break over to over the level over 4148, they'll change that hourly trend, have us fairly confident that that daily low has been set, and we'll be looking up pairs, we'll be looking up for a lower high under 4830. I uh, just kind of, I think I would just wait for that if looking long I'd, I'd prefer deeper i don't really love i don't there, i don't really love a follow-up play here there's not a lot of range for it right if this was five six straight bars of upside then yeah let's plan that next trade but for now if looking long i would actually prefer lower lows <laughs> i would prefer to go, come down a little bit more get that hourly extension come into the shelf a little bit and then potentially bounce out of it <clears throat> excuse me and then for shorts my primary focus would just be that daily lower high Right, so ideally we'll get hourly extension into that uh, resistance level over here. So maybe something like that. Could play out tomorrow. This is a pretty big mover. And if it were to rush up like that, I would be more inclined to take the short because, well, I like that. <laughs> I like the ex extension, right? You want, you want bulls to get tired, you know, rush up. All right. Okay, WKHS just signing up, just getting real tight still, bouncing up, bouncing between, I should say, these ranges. And you kind of have three tiers on this. You have the limits, and then the center line is definitely acting as, you know, a, a decent level of support and resistance, right? You can see one, two, three tops got put in there, a bottom, and then now another bottom, right? So essentially, like five pivots have been put in at this medium shelf level. So something to, be, to pay, pay attention to. The trades that we have set up, I don't know if you can hear that. That's a weird noise. Anyway, the trades that we've been paying attention to primarily are reactive trades. Because the range is so tight here, I don't really love taking trades within it. 
Um, but if you were to take one, I would I would prefer to play a bullish, right? Because as long as we're above this shelf, uh, the shelf of support, this middle green bar, then I, you know, I, I, I'm inclined to believe the bulls more. That being said, I don't love this tight range because I don't like playing in this tight range. And so when ranges get super tight like that, I prefer to just stick to the uh, reactive plays. And so right now these two trades are set up because we could be making a move up to look for a potential weekly lower high, right? Under... 28.89 or we could be moving down to continue looking for a higher low over i don't know why the label's gone over 15.13 right well, i don't know it's very getting very tight <laughs> i do again have a bullish lean especially when we look at the weekly time frame we see we're still holding the emas now because the slope of the ema support is sideways we're not as confident in it, but it's still better than being under it, right? It's still it's having the support, whether or not it's uh, convincing in a convincing fashion, it's still better than not having the support. So the daily, daily time frame is a little bit different. We're under the res, uh, EMA resistance there. And so again, we're just sticking to these reactive plays. That's all I really care about. If the CQ were to break bullish, we'll be looking up here for potential reactive plays. And then if we were to, if it were to react bearishly, We'll be looking down here for some potential play. Okay, so we're either we're looking for that weekly higher low still, or we're looking for that weekly lower high as a bear. That's it. Hourly extension would be ideal. Looking for that pivot. Okay, and for that weekly, uh, yeah, it's fine. Let's see, make sure it's gonna drag these ranges out to the four hour oversold as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay so i have booted plus uh no i have booted nkla because nkla is incredibly weak it is however in this shelf of support you know it's an interesting place to potentially get to make plays but i, I don't know because i have been well, not that i have been but i shared this xpev setup in in the chat room so hmm, let's see if i can i guess i could show you guys uh, so if you're if you're a member, check out the thread. All right, so this was shared. I forget one. I don't know. Uh, a day ago. So if you're a member, check out this thread here. Uh, it was just this uh, XPEV analysis looking at that wedge. Everything was shared in the YouTube video. So my point is, because I've started talking about it, I'm just going to start covering it. Uh, in the video and nkla is just bringing shame to the bull families now that being said xpev is still not out of the woods okay we, we have started a little bit of daily bounce we held this shelf of support but we're still under the daily ema resistance and we are technically looking for a daily lower high under 51.98 okay so cautious of this daily resistance just above bulls are trying to get back over the ema resistance right now after holding this I like to see this, you know, I like to see when, when price comes into like a low volume area and then holds it. I, I, at the very least, I would anticipate a retest of this $52 level now, fill out this, uh, you can see how this, this is kind of how volume profile tends to work, right? You tend to see some market agreement, some contraction, some consolidation. It tends to be a standard distribution, like a, a bell curve, and then it takes off. See, it happens here too. That's kind of what happens when you consolidate. And so I wouldn't be surprised then if this little wonky business over here were to start getting filled out. Wouldn't be surprised if this whole thing were to get filled out a bit and we just EQ like this, kind of like what WKHS is doing, okay? But one thing at a time, check the hourly time frame. And what I was watching for this play was really just the wedge break, right? I see that it's wedging. I know that we're entering this consolidation zone. It's starting to round off a little bit on the bottom. And so that was really just what I was paying attention to. And so the hourly trend is bullish. Still very bullish, potentially setting another higher low here. The hourly 8 and 21 EMAs have gotten that bull cross now. So ideally, bulls would be able to hold that as support for a bit. Remember, we're looking up at the potential of a daily lower high here. The hourly would get overbought if it were to come up and test 5198 right now from here. So potential short off of that level. I don't hate it. Don't hate it. Something like that, perhaps. And if you are looking long, 
Uh, if you're looking long, then you're hoping that this is not the hourly higher low. This is quite a bit of range here. At the same time, you don't want to see too much consolidation, right? This is quite a bit of range here. And so, you know, if we were to pull back a little bit more, then I think it would be fine to look for a, 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 an hourly higher low play somewhere over here in five minute over sold conditions. Okay. Uh, but ideally, though, the bulls will just push up tomorrow, come up here, resume this hourly trend, and then pull back for an hourly higher low, ideally off of the 12 VMA. So if price tomorrow, if the bulls are able to show up tomorrow and push up right away, then get rejected while the ADMA is like making its way up here, and then price comes down, oops, and then price comes down to test that EMA, and we get five minute over sold conditions, then that would be ideal, something like that over there. Okay, so that's a lot of ifs, <laughs> um, but that's uh, that's pretty much like all you. That's pretty much everything that can happen, right? And if we just dip down low, break all these supports, then I still think it's fine to be looking for uh, daily pivot plays over here somewhere, uh, looking in hourly oversold conditions. Okay. So five minute over five minute oversold plays for hourly higher lows tomorrow for day trades. And then if you're a more of a swing trader, looking for that daily lower high, potentially against 51.98 in hourly overbought conditions. And finally plug. Uh, plug uh. The plug potentially has this head and shoulders look to it as well. If we were to come down and test this neckline support. Maybe it's a mega, nah. If we were to come down and test this uh, support level straight from here, that would probably look a bit more head and shoulders-y. But for now, maybe we're just looking at an EQ, maybe a broadening formation, I'm not sure yet. Either way, we are looking for a daily high or low, anything over. 2225 will be one. So let's check it out. Make sure that we... Obviously, the hourly trend is bearish. I'm just going to kill this. Don't need that anymore. So the hourly would get oversold quite a ways above that level now. No? Let's see what that looks like on the daily time frame. I don't hate it. Now, this would change if we see some bounce. If we see some bounce to cool off the RSI, then, of course, just move those levels down. Making sure that you're only making those entries when the hourly is extended. And I, I have been speaking to some members and I just want to make it very clear. The RSI alone is not an excellent indicator. Um, I, I know that you've seen this play out time and time again uh, in the videos. But that is also because we are marking off price action levels. So to, in my opinion, the only reason why this bounced here with hourly extension is because if you look left, you know, we can just extend this line. No way, that's a gray, but... If you just extend this line, you can see that this was clearly an area of support and resistance for a little bit, but primarily support. One, two, three, four hits of support. And now this fifth one. Okay, so it's not just the RSI alone. Don't just kill into RSI. There's also context. You want to have price action support, and ideally you want to have the trend on your side, and ideally you'll want to have the sector on your side, and ideally you'll want to have the market on your side, right? There's a lot of levels of context. And there's also context for you as a trader. How do you feel? Right. If you if you're if you're like feeling groggy, you're sick, you got COVID, whatever, then that's not good context for trading. <laughs> Definitely not trading aggressively. All right. Well, that about covers it. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you all soon.